free to hold the camera still. Seriously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's on a loop, yeah. and that's how, you know, isn't that so Ocean's Eleven? Isn't that, the that, that how they rob yeah. the casino? Yeah, yeah. that's how everybody right. robs right. everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like in every movie. That's <laughs> so, the way they do it. So, yeah, it's always the elevator. Mission Impossible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, right? It's like, that, oh, I've seen, did I've you seen see that, that glitch? One. What's going on? Oh, no. It's way too late. It's one scared guy with his feet up, and he's looking at it like, wait a minute. Let's rewind, rewind. The time in the bottom right corner. They've already left. Stuck. And the gold is gone. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how, that's how all that's going The lights work. are on an auto timer, and they didn't go off. It's 3.30. <laughs> Something's wrong down there. Go. Get the captain on the phone now. I love those films, though. Yeah. yeah we we just wrote a movie. Yeah, we wrote a movie. Yeah, yeah, we wrote yeah. a movie based off of Amazon <laughs> that's Key. Right. That's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, I think we're, we're live right now. Hello, everyone. This is Trends with Benefits. This is our weekly roundtable tech podcast where we talk about the trending tech topics of the day. And we have a bunch of stuff to get to today. We're going to be talking about um, the new Google Pixel earbuds. We're going to cover Bill Gates' potential tech city, his future tech city that he's building. We're going to talk about the Apple iPhone Face ID. Um, and of course, what our main question is that we're going to talk about is, will you use the Amazon Key home delivery system? Now, that's not the first time we've asked this question on this show, but there's new uh, information that has been released about how it can potentially be hacked. And it does sound like something straight out of a movie, where <laughs> essentially you can hack the cloud camera system if you are in there at the right place at the right time, and it will just have a freeze frame, so it'll look like you're watching a live stream, but it really is a freeze frame of whatever the last shot was, so probably just an empty room, and then you know burglars can come in or whatever. I picture guys with like masks on yeah, that'll uh, come in and steal everything. So that's, that's what the question is, though, is will you use the Amazon Key Home Delivery System? Because some people still think it's a great way to not get things stolen off your front porch. But let's introduce our cast here. I'm Greg Nibbler, and to my right, uh, I'm Brandon Witter. I'm the strategy editor here at Digital Trends. And we've got a special guest today joining us. It is uh, Michael. Hello, Michael. Oh. Um, maybe you can uh, let everybody know what you do. And I, I'm sorry, we do have to talk about your history before you got into tech as well. <laughs> okay, are you going to talk about it or am I going to talk okay, about it? Okay, I want you to talk about it. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to screw it up. Okay. I mean, well, I'm Michael Afric. I'm the uh, CEO of Inmoji. Um, and today what I do is uh, we build uh, clickable, rich media-driven icons uh, in the form of emojis to be shared on messaging apps and on operating systems around the world. Um, my past life, um, I was actually a recording artist signed with Hollywood uh, Records, which is owned by Disney, and opened up for NSYNC to Britney Spears, and uh, I sold about 25 million records around the world as a writer and producer. My God, God 25 million Holy records. Crap. That is a Impressive. That's ridiculous. That is a, that is a lot. Well, it's like yeah. approaching Bon Jovi levels. It's less than levels. 26, though. It is so, less you know, than 26. Just that's saying. Totally <laughs> <you know> that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So anyway, I mean, I would love to probably spend a half hour just asking you questions all about that, but I know we have to get to some other things. And we're going to talk about emoji here towards the end, too. I might ask about Britney Spears. So uh, let's go on the, on the very end, though. Also joining us. I'm Ryan Juanita. I'm an associate editor here. and I'm just a guy. I'm just a man. You just had a, a recording career. I have, yeah. no, I have an album, but you it did not album. sell 25 million <laughs> <laughs> at all. Just shy of 25 it, I think million. it was 25. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, nobody sells albums anymore. I didn't sell a damn one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the downloads. I'm on Spotify. <laughs> well, see, there we go. It's something. That is. That's good. All right, well, let's, let's start with this. I'm seeing some uh, comments and questions coming in here so we are like i said live on facebook and youtube we want to see your comments and i want i'm curious what you guys think because uh before we started the show i think we have some uh, some conflicting opinions about the amazon key home delivery system so a lot of people seem to be very much opposed to it about uh, the idea of letting a stranger into your house and just to fill you in in case you're not sure how it works the system will work you'll have an amazon key lock like a digital lock for your front door it's combined with Excuse me, a cloud uh, camera system so where you can schedule a delivery. A delivery driver will show up from Amazon and they will be able to get access to your house and go in, deliver your package, uh, leave, and then it'll lock back up. They also are going to partner with a bunch of other services like cleaning services, uh, all kinds of different things that they want to, other companies they want to partner with. So it's a lot of different people that eventually could have access to the Amazon key delivery system. They say they're going to do extensive background checks for everybody. How they could do that for, with the potential of seriously hundreds of thousands of people if you really expand it out to all these other services. I don't know how you can really background check all that, um, but... Now, there's a company out of Seattle that said there is a way that they figured out to hack the system. So if somebody does get access to your, to your house, say a delivery driver shows up, if that delivery driver wanted to, there's a very e simple computer system that they can use uh, with an antenna, I guess, either like a Raspberry Pi or even a phone, and they can uh, freeze the camera to where it just broadcasts the one image, and then you can go about whatever you want. So even if you're watching on your phone, it's going to look like nothing's going on. 
So, going around the room, are you pro or for a pro or against the Amazon key delivery system? You know, I'm not completely opposed, but I just don't really see the benefit. Yeah. I mean, I live in a fairly safe neighborhood. Portland That's the as a whole is yeah. pretty yeah. safe. I yeah. lived in an area where people were constantly stealing packages off my porch, which seems to be a thing with kids these days. Apparently. Right. Yeah. Um, I may reconsider that, but as it stands now, it's yeah. not worth it. No, not yeah. worth it for you. Okay, Michael, what about you? Well, I mean, I, I'm sort of 50-50. I, I, I would have been skeptical that a company like Uber would have been able to vet their drivers so well, and I think they do a pretty good job at it. That's true. Um, that's, that's so a good that, point. That, and that just came to me as we were sitting here, because 10 seconds ago I was totally against it. But then I was thinking, I think they could pull that off. Um, at the same time, I kind of don't see the value of protecting one package that's going to be dropped off towards you know letting someone all the way into your house to all the other things that he right. didn't drop off. That yeah. seems a little strange. Well, you want to make sure that deodorant's safe. Yeah. And then I was thinking <laughs> what you could do as a backup system is you could set up 17 nests all over your house. That's true. And have a secondary system to watch when they <laughs> set up their Eddie Murphy style. Know, yeah, uh, their uh, heist. Uh, the yeah. heist scene, and <laughs> yeah. you can't see, and then your nest camera is your backup to see what's going on. So, you know, if you dub double down on that, you could really uh, trick the system there. That's true. A yeah, system I, to watch the system. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I suppose you could do that. I mean, like, like Brandon <laughs> said, if you have got the money for 17 nests. I, like Brandon said, uh, I live in a pretty safe neighborhood. When I lived in Phoenix, people came up to our house uh, after I had moved out, actually, and drove up a moving truck and took literally everything in the house of value wow. and drove away Ooh. in the middle of the day. Yeah. So some people live in neighborhoods where this might be, you know, a godsend or a, at least a way to monitor. But I'm sort of categorically against any kind of monitoring with cameras. I mean, we have enough of that in real life. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we had the cloud cam in our AV room recently. <laughs> and uh, Caleb, who is normally a nice guy, got a little power hungry <laughs> and started uh, <laughs> started monitoring everybody on his phone and like saying <laughs> funny things. I mean, he was mostly joking, but at the same time, it's like <laughs> that's a weird. It. That's a weird kind of power, <laughs> and I don't want anybody in my household or anyone I know let or anyone Caleb. I don't know, <laughs> let alone freaking Caleb Dennison, <laughs> to be monitoring me. I just don't I don't like that vibe, man. And yeah. I know that's coming, and we're all going to have to deal with it, but for now, I don't need that. Yeah. It's the idea, and I, I, excuse my ignorance, but it's mm -hmm. the idea that the camera is always on in the sense that I, well, it's it can not be. like, but it's not enabled like, like if you take Ring, it, it's kind of more like you press the, the doorbell yeah. and the, the camera kind of turns on, right? It's actually, it, it is uh, supposedly like that for the basic delivery system is that once the driver gets there, then the camera will turn on right. and record what's happening. And then when the driver leaves and it locks again, then it shuck. Off. Right, but you can so you get turn the camera on from but your you phone do, anytime. Right. So you, you can, can leave it right. on. You can talk to people from yeah. it. You can record. I, I do have to admit it. It's a, it's a bit creepy because it's creepy. even myself, mm -hmm. you know, I actually do have a nest in my daughter's room because she's sure. two, two, not yeah. fifteen. But, That's you know, uh, yeah. baby and, monitors you know, are one thing. But the strange thing is, is that I'm in there sometimes and I'm forgetting that the camera's on. Absolutely. And everyone else in my family can watch the nest, and I'm going, what was I doing in my yeah, nest? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Half an hour ago. I'm, I'm in there packing up a speaker, and I hear, yeah, could you not put that on top of the speaker there? <laughs> Excuse me? It's 7 o'clock, you know, I, I actually, one time, I, I accidentally pressed the button on the nest and started talking, and it, it beeps in the room first, and then it talks. Right, right. And my entire family was like, what the f was... Everybody, I was and I wanted to go it's out, like, this is God talking. You know? It's like, off-putting. Nobody, nobody expects that little nest camera to broadcast yeah i think it's just yeah. a film and it is a bit creepy yep. yeah that what, is that is unnerving what's the startup fee associated with this too to be, to be talking uh about? as far as how much it costs let yeah, me I think it's like 200 bucks to get i think it's i too. think so yeah and you well, have you to have a both. smart lock of course yeah. yeah it comes with a lock and yeah. the the phone and I, even it's smart locks 200 range and i'll see if i can get the actual price you know depending on how you do it smart locks are pretty hackable too and even <laughs> Like key fobs. I remember on our street, and mm -hmm. they said, no, that's not possible, but it was happening. Somebody had a key fob system that was opening people's cars in the middle of the night, and you'd wake up, and all your doors are open, and your trunk's open. Oh, yeah. That's... And they were doing it all along the street, and everybody was like, no, I lock my car. I lock it every Phoenix. night. Phoenix. No, that wasn't in Phoenix. Uh. That was in Portland. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just think any kind of auto lock system is also a danger. Yeah. But, you know. Well, taking a look here just in the chat before we move on to the next topic, too. Um, I am seeing a lot of people... Let's see, uh, Chaitri, I'm probably saying your name wrong, so I'll just uh, continue on. Uh, Amazon says can't do that. They want their d driver to deliver more than 50 packages in a three-hour block. That's true. I mean, Amazon drivers, they just throw it on the porch and, and are gone. <laughs> I've seen them do it. Like, I'll be standing right there. I'm like, you can hand it to me, but it's on the porch and gone. So, yeah, that, that's true. They'll have to hire, I would think, more people 
if this really caught on. Yeah. Um, in order to be able to do that, a lot of yeah, no way, man. Um, would have been on board if they had developed a secure package lockbox for your property, but hell no to this. That's yeah, true. that's not a bad a idea. Point. Yeah. yeah, a lockbox yeah. isn't bad. It's a really heavy box. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's Shit. true. If it's, then, the, if it's one of their their drones. Yeah, yeah, the, the, exactly. This program not to steal. Yeah. yeah. Now it's it can just fly, fly up to your door. You know, <laughs> we really are living in the time of a heist from like an '80s movie. This yeah. Is, this is it. Yeah. I'm super excited to write that film with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have connections, right? Hollywood recordings. And so. it's sponsored by Amazon, or maybe I got, not. I got, sponsored the, sound, by I got the soundtrack. Coming. Google. <laughs> soundtrack is set. Are for you it. thinking like Seagal lead or um, someone else? Yeah, I, I was, I, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, that might work. Exploring yeah. opportunities. Yeah. Uh, but see, in my area, Amazon uses USPS and UPS to deliver my package, and that's that's another good point like uh, i guess for this they're talking about having their own drivers and their own fleets which so, they do have yeah well and they could ramp up slowly i mean it's not like everybody's gonna grab one overnight it doesn't sound like a lot of people are gonna grab this yeah we'll like anyone has. <laughs> yeah so this is uh this is where it's at right now that's talking about the amazon key home delivery system we have more about that at digital trends uh but we've got a few other things to get to and just along the lines of security since that is kind of a hot thing right now with with all of the new kinds of technology that are coming out especially with the Apple iPhone 10 and their face ID system and we've heard reports where you know where it wasn't working where it just wasn't letting somebody in. but now we've had two reports over this last week one was a company I, I forgive me if I, I'm wrong but I think it was Korea they spent like a thousand dollars creating this elaborate mask system of this person and they were able to use the mask to unlock a phone that seems like a lot of work. Most people aren't going to be doing that. <laughs> However, there's another video that just came out this week, and it is of a, uh, a mother and her 10-year-old son, and it's the mom of iPhone 10, and she showcases it on this video, how her 10-year-old son can unlock it with his face. So it's programmed for her, and she demonstrates it in the video, shows it unlocking with her. She locks it again and hands it over to the kid, and he is able to unlock it. To be fair, that's a freakily. Yeah. To be fair, though, that's a freakily uh, look alike. Like it has literally every feature. It was like he yeah. was cloned with it is only her close. DNA. But you know, like every kid out there right now with a parent with an iPhone 10 is trying that just to see if they can get into it. Yeah. But I mean, the the idea though, I mean, because what they've promised us with all this stuff is that it's so secure. And granted, maybe this is a one in a million chance, but still, it's somebody else used the Face ID system and was able to get into I, it. I feel like, for me personally, mm -hmm. I'm not using the Face. Uh, I, I, I used to have an old uh, Samsung Note 7 before it was uh, exploding on planes. <laughs> yeah. um, Glad you still hear this. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, and they had the, the iris scan. And yeah. they said that's so secure, and Apple's saying this is so secure. I wasn't using it because it was secure. I was using it so that I wouldn't have to type it, so that I could also yeah. maybe at night, you know, if I were in bed or something, I don't have to type it. I can just look at it, and it would, it would light up enough that my, it would still see my eyes. And I, I thought this was just more of a convenience. When you're talking about yeah. security, I, I just don't see how that's more secure than typing a number in. I mean, if, yeah. num if I'm the only one that knows the number, and you're saying the odds of guessing a number, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's more secure to me. I would never use the facial thing because I wouldn't trust that exact thing, that it yeah. doesn't malfunction, and then look at anybody's face. And I, I, I think even with the iris scan, I feel like every once in a while someone would look at my phone and it would just open. Wow. And I'd be like, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But if you have this, the passcode, that yeah. never happened. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to get in without the passcode. That's, that is true. Ryan, what do you think about this? I mean, the whole idea was that they wanted to get rid of the home button. Uh -huh. And, you know, yep. they, the home button was awesome. As soon as they got the fingerprint, that's the best reason. That was the best reason ever to buy an S model. Because yeah. if you had the 5, you didn't have it. And if you had the 5S, you did. And frankly, yeah, a code is more secure. But who the hell wants to do that every damn time you yeah. open your phone? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm sticking with my iPhone 6 for now. I would never spend $1,000 on a phone anyway. Right. And, uh, it might be the yeah. new norm, though. I mean, that seems to be nah, where it's not going to be. Cost? There will always be I mean, cheaper Android. Android well, phones. that's true. There will always be cheaper phones. Yeah, and as I'm, far as I'm, the high I'm already thinking about jumping ship anyway. So. Yeah. Um, headphone so, jack. You know, head, same old thing. Is, same yeah, old yeah. story. Headphone jack, yeah, that'll be your thing. Um, I mean, I do like the convenience of just the fingerprint scanner. Yeah, but, it's great. Because that's that's what I have on mine. It's, it's a cheaper LG phone. but it's And on newer one. phones, it's it kind works of awesome. instantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was messing around with an LG V30, which does have a headphone jack and also has all kinds of good audio stuff inside. And they Really yeah. nice DAC. And it's super quick when you open it up. And they disclose that you do the, uh... the audio editor to a certain <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
I do like that. Did, they, did you have to change your uh, your jack for plugging your phone, uh, the phone into the charger for the 80th time? Yeah, well, see, I didn't I didn't switch to it. I was just kind of messing with it. Yeah. But I, I just even having that phone, uh, it did have a SIM card, and I, I was just having it for a few days. I was like, I could I could deal with this. I the mean, only just, thing yeah. is iMessage for me. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Yeah. Except right. that I don't never I would never spend a thousand dollars on a phone. I don't care about <laughs> face recognition. I think the fingerprint works great. That's, Get off that's, my lawn. That's my deal. And, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's the news coming up on the Apple iPhone 10. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to get to, so mm. keep uh, dropping your comments there on Facebook and YouTube. We do need to talk about, uh, since you are the audio guy here, Ryan, mm. um, the Google Pixel earbuds, which came out, yeah. and you had a chance to have some hands-on time with them. Yeah. There's a full review at digitaltrends.com, but I wanted to talk to you about them, you know, what you thought. What was your overall opinions? Like, what were your highlights, your lowlights? Yeah, they're not great. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I was, uh, you know, I was a little easy on them. I, we gave them a three out of five. I it, it probably could have leaned towards a 2.5, but, you know, I, just given what I had with me, there's some cool things about it. Um, one reason it didn't go lower was because it does have a case that gives you 24 hours of battery. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to have something you could kind of take off the grid, but the fit's not great. Um, you're supposed to maybe loop it around your ear. I didn't do that. You can kind of choose whether you do that. Looping it around your ear is really hard to do. So the earbuds, they're connected with a wire. Yeah, and they're yeah, connected so with a wire. Yeah, that's the main thing. I mean, so everybody was comparing them to the AirPods, but they mm -hmm. don't compare to the AirPods because the AirPods are completely wire-free. Yeah. So they compare to a lot of tethered earphones, and we've had these banded earphones where they're connected by a wire mm -hmm. uh, for years. I've got and like there's lots circle. of really great ones they're that like cost that. less than Google's and sound better and are more comfortable. And some of them are sweat proof and some have heart rate monitors. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, those get higher scores because they're better. If you really want Google's stuff, you know, they'll be all right. The The sound wasn't great either. It's, it's comparable to Apple's AirPods. But again, you're getting a, uh, the AirPods are the exact same price and you're getting a truly wireless pair of headphones. Yeah. And not only that, but the pair that works the best out of any of them. Apple developed a W1 chip, which works really well. Um, and for those who don't know, the biggest, the hardest part about true wireless earbuds is not necessarily connecting to your phone. We've been doing that for a long time now, but yeah. connecting to each other, which is why they usually have a mm -hmm. wire. Uh, they actually have to go through your brain. And there's a company that makes uh, an actual system just for that called near field magnetic induction which actually helps the the sound that comes from the phone to one of the earphones go through your brain <laughs> and go to the other earphone god that's, that's creepy. how true wireless more headphones and more work with every passenger yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing about this that people should know if they're they're hot to jump on these airpods are one of the best out there but that's one of the best out of not a great field yeah. secondly bluetooth is uh, rumored to be working on the bluetooth company uh, the bluetooth protocol protocol is rumored to be coming that allows for phones and uh, other devices to send two streams one to each earphone uh, so that you don't have to worry about going through your head and once that happens it's probably going to be a lot easier to make really nice uh, true wireless headphones wow what do you think Go of the head? Wow. I know. Well, that's why they're <laughs> that's bothering me. It's very futuristic when they call them headphones back in the day, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. No, it really is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, or you could just take the short answer. Ah, I wouldn't buy those. What about, <laughs> about the the translation software? Yeah, There's the translation the software is cool. It's people. a little faster, and it goes straight to your ear. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, you can do the same thing on the Pixel phone with Google Translate mm -hmm. without yeah. the Pixel Buds. So okay. You might just want to pick up the Pixel phone and just go with that. Yeah, which is uh, pretty. I mean, most people a lot of that. They like the phone. phone. Yeah, I think the two XL had a little bit of trouble with the screen, but yeah. other than that, the Pixel Two is supposed to have one of the best, if not the best, cameras, and it's supposed to be a great phone. I mess with it a little bit. It's a nice phone. Yeah, I, I like the V30 a little bit better, but it's a mm -hmm. nice little phone. So yeah, if you want the Google translation, you can definitely use that with the buds with the Pixel phone, but you can also use it with just the phone. So yeah. Huh. Uh, that's a little faster. Uh, the one thing that people are really excited about, and I think it was kind of cool, is how fast it is with Google Assistant. And it is. You hold it down, and bam, you're going. Uh, you're getting, you know, your messages. You can mm -hmm. you can program it to control, you know, what you're listening to. You can get directions, whatever you want, anything that Google can serve yeah. up. So that's cool. But other than that, just not good. And yeah. how much? How much did you say these cost? They are one fifty nine. Yeah, and you can get a pair of really nice wireless headphones that are banded together for 100 bucks. that'll sound a lot better. Yeah, man, not a, not a fan. Not a fan down here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the worst either. They're fine if you really want Google stuff. Well, you can check it out at digitaltrends.com. It's full review, and, uh, and take a look at them. I'm seeing, yeah, some comments. Very cheap and plasticky looking. Wouldn't buy those. They actually uh, feel like fairly quality uh, yeah. materials in your hand, except for the case. The case is pretty flimsy. The case is pretty bad, yeah. 
Um, love that explanation about the banded head earphones work. So they're good for utility, but not music. Is that it? James is asking. I mean, yeah, except they also don't sit in your ears very well, so they can fall out. Yeah. Um, it's kind of nice, though, because then the tap controls, which you can control some of the stuff on the side with the tap, it's not fully uh, buried in your ear, so it doesn't hurt. Because mm -hmm. sometimes if you're wearing true wireless earphones, almost all of them have outside controls. And if it's dug into your ear canal, yeah. it's, it's kind of uncomfortable to use those controls. Let me ask you, I, I use my headphones probably... It's funny, as the early part of my career, definitely would have been more music. Yeah. But now... Uh, you know, running my company, I use it more Using it on the phone. On the phone, yeah. And I found that the Apple headphones with the wire, right? Um, truthfully, the way they sit in my ear, uh, the way I'm actually able to still sort of hear my surroundings, mm -hmm. but yet hear my call, is very yeah. natural feeling. Whereas when I put in a lot of the other headphones out in the market, and I've never tried the ones that, that you're reviewing, right? Um, they block out so much Again, of the noise around me that I'm, like, I'm, so I'm just stuck in my phone call. Absolutely. And then I'm walking around like the airport, and I, I don't hear things, and I don't like that. What, what's really great about the Apple headphones is I'm able to put my phone away, feel like I'm on the phone like I normally am, hearing the mm -hmm. outside world, but not, you know, not uh, having that, that sort of headphone-y kind yeah, of block out. Feel. And, yeah, and, and I think so that, Google that, was going for that, and so they, they do give you more ambient sound as you walk around. So it, it's definitely by design. Yeah. It's just yeah. whether that's for you or not. So there's, there's definitely saying, benefits so, and negatives. But their know? headphones are more like that. A little bit more, I think, than Apple's. I feel like Apple's sit a little bit deeper in. Um, but yeah, both of them have pretty pretty good uh, ambient around, noise. Yeah. The, the problem though with that being if you're you know on a commute and you want to block out the world, you can't. Right. Yeah. So, and and that brings up a whole different that's a whole issues, different thing. which is yeah, then exactly. the microphone, does it condense and pick up just you or does it hear everything behind you? And, right. You know, yeah. That's where I think Apple really nailed it, I think, actually, on like the the uh, the headset for phones calls as well. Because yeah. typically when I'm talking on my uh, headphones, nobody's saying to me, hey, are you like, you know, are you in the airport? Everyone's just hearing me. It's very yeah. good at, at uh, capturing just the person talking. So I think that's a, the, you know, and yeah. so for me, that it's just funny because I look. That's the first thing I look at the headphones for, and then I say, "Well, if they're pretty good with music, that's good too." Right. So nice I, I look on for top that. of it. Yeah. So it's more the utility that you're looking for yeah. first. Yeah. As far as that is, of course. Then they're so small, and you're walking around. It looks like you're talking to yourself for anybody else. <laughs> I <laughs> thought we moved sorry. past that's that. The <laughs> that's the golf tee design. Like, oh god. That's what the golf tee design does for you. And you know, people made fun of the AirPods for the golf tee design. Uh, and now I feel like it's sort of like the cool new thing. It's the status yeah. it's thing. Yeah, ubiquitous. Everyone I see has those. You things. can see them everywhere now, and it's like, yeah. oh, look at this guy. He's got the little golf tee. <laughs> Spent a thousand dollars on a phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look exactly. at big shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, get to a, just a couple more things here that we wanted to cover uh, today. And and this one, this is more just kind of a general idea. And it's this report that came out this week. And I've seen a couple of conflicting things, but generally speaking, this is what's being reported: is that Bill Gates Investment Group, uh, Cascade Investment LLC purchased a large plot of land outside of Phoenix, Arizona, I think 24,800 acres. <laughs> and what they want to do is um, create a smart city. It's the idea behind this, and there's not a ton of uh, details out it, about it, but I think just the idea is, is enough to talk about, is that they would build from the ground up a technologically smart city where they've got 80,000 plots apparently for homes, and they've uh, mapped out commercial and industrial areas and schools, and they want to use the highest end technology possible using 3D printing and have everything, I'm sure, everything connected and start this from the ground up and see what they can build with it. And I think that that concept is really fascinating. I mean, Bill Gates obviously has the money to do something like this, which it would be weird. I imagine he's going to have statues of himself like all over the place too. But I mean, if you're going to build a city, you know, might as well. I only have one question. Yeah. Is there going to be a monorail? No, you have to have a monorail. <laughs> yeah, there's no monorail. future city without a monorail. <laughs> They're always in the SketchUp, that's for sure. Yeah, but um, Michael, we were talking before, and I was wondering, uh, uh, you know, what your thoughts were on this. I, I mean, I'm equal parts fascinated and completely intrigued, and then at the same time thinking that they're going to know everything I do with my that's life. That's true. Yeah. But I'd love a summer home there. Uh, but no, honestly, you, you I, mean I, a winter. Yeah, home. I think it'll be yeah, exactly. In the summer. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I think of like Back to the Future. You know, uh -huh. and I think of like you know the future city concepts. But the idea of being Just in a city that's built past. from today yeah. Yeah. forward, infrastructurally, and, yeah. and sort of that—that's a very cool concept. And mm -hmm. I, the, well, that's a good point because that's really the problem with implementing new technologies on mass right now. Right. I mean, that's the reason yeah. that cell phones went quicker overseas than they did here is because we had all our crap done right. right. in Right. They did, exactly right. retrofitting so, the old the old gear. To me, to be able to sort of walk into a home that's not 
being retrofitted that's right. built from from that you know from today's technology forward yeah. would be an incredible probably thing to built be a part to of. be you know insulation you know insulated it probably has an airlock system so that oh, yeah. it's way easier to heat way less energy use. and if they're building it today right right they're building it knowing what might be coming 10 years from now yeah so then well you're already like iglo houses that you can print right now that, yeah. that they work really well and that, that's another you know example of that kind of tech that they're they're, they're building them in smaller neighborhoods you but, can imagine they'd bring everybody in like that yeah yeah and maybe how cool. everything autonomous i'm sure all yep. kinds of yeah. autonomous cars autonomous right and how right. cool is that yeah. they could, they could yeah. actually like walk build the movie. street you know to better have better tracking for autonomous vehicles for mm-hmm. one thing right. like when they when they actually roll out the streets that'd be cool yeah hey. Yeah, but part of the idea is just to test out all that stuff to have a place right. to do that. Yeah, a right. place with ample space, yeah. too. Yeah, right? that is a great idea. But, but also, you know, I wonder how many cities were thought out about building almost like a whiteboard canvas, meaning yeah. that you're yeah. building and you're going, we may get this wrong, but it's really easy to wipe it clean. So it's like yeah. one thing I, I've always thought about is like, you know, every car should be on a track. And I think they had that in that uh, Tom Cruise movie. Uh, Minority Report. Yeah, and yeah. all the cars are moving around, and that'd be great. But to do it now, not possible. Yeah. Right. You know, but you this they could build everything. and say, yeah. we might do that if this doesn't work out. So yeah. let's build in so that the roads are able to do that really easy. Right. So then you'd be able to grow with the future trends a little faster. Yeah. And I think that would be a really – it'd just be really interesting to be around it. I would it, – it's one of those things, like, people ask, you know, would you go to space if you could? It's like, how do you say no to that? Like, yeah. Of course, I'm going to try it once, you know, but if you give me the, op- the opportunity to, to live in, you know, be one of the 80,000 families that could live there, I'd be there in a minute. Your boy yeah. Lance Bass is all over it. What's that? Your boy Lance Bass is all over it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Did you, did you sign up for the Mars mission? Were they just, like, I would have. Yeah, that's I right. Done it. That was open submission. Totally would have done it. <laughs> I was a little busy that day. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that is cool how they could, they could build it out like a grid, you know, like they build sort of Air Force bases and stuff like that where they mm-hmm. can, you know, they can grid it out. Plus, that's why it's in the desert. It's flat. You can grid it. You can right. grid it in any, any And it's design. Arizona. And, they well, and then they've always been thinking about this in Arizona. You go down there and the freeways are four lanes when they only need one just because they're, they're built. They so got space. They got space. Well, it's they're the biggest urban the expansion sprawl around. People moving there. Yeah. Uh, just to give a shout out here to Caleb Whiskey Mist Dennison, who is uh, who's tuning in. <laughs> By the way, Ryan said some things at the beginning of the show about oh, you. Oh, so uh, many so, things. So many things. Uh, Caleb says, Utopia Shmopia, unless you take into consideration human nature, you're lost. How will you nurse humanity into the new future? That's the real question. That's thinking big. That's he's thinking in Mexico right staring into the ocean, thinking about the big <laughs> no. problems, the big things. Yeah, he's probably drinking tequila right now. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, Oh, six margaritas deep. That's a There it is. <laughs> there it is. That sounds about right. What are you doing listening to us? <laughs> <laughs> hey, never miss. Never miss Friends with Benefits, pal. Um, all right, well, if you missed the beginning of the show, we, we explained a little bit about what Michael does and, and where you came from as far as this tra- strange transition going from being a pop singer into now a CEO of a tech company is is just a weird road. I can't imagine how that actually happened. Like, yeah. So so you were on tour with InSync and Britney Spears. Yes. And um, I'm assuming going all over the world. I can't even imagine what that world is like. It's a pretty interesting one. Yeah. yeah. Especially I mean, then. Yeah. No. It was it was uh, it was about as fun a time in your life as you can have. It's certainly you know I I, I think. If I was in Portland, it was just to do a show here and go on. So this might, yeah. you know, but I got to see I think forty eight of the fifty states, and you know I, I certainly experienced you know plenty of people and just you know all the culture, and then you know it ended me and, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but Sorry. no, the, the the path to here is actually when you when you hear it, it actually makes a lot more sense than you can imagine, and that is that you know. I spent a lot of time making connections with people um, who are coming up in the music industry, and these are intelligent marketers, they're mm-hmm. intelligent business people, they're people who are creative. And then you get into the, the business that I'm in, which is you know taking brands and putting them in the in a position to be in front of the masses in a very uh, seamless and innocuous way for sharing and, and, and consumption of content and having it feel very organic. And who who has become the the leaders of these companies that I'm going to are all the people that kind of were with me along my ride. And so you have uh, guys who started out at radio and now they're running iHeartRadio. You yeah. got a guy who's doing this and now he's the VP of, you know, Arista Records. So whatever it is, you know, and they all have climbed up to these positions. So my connections, my Rolodex has worked for me. My acumen has been in sort of licensing or understanding how to take, you know, branded content and, and maneuver that into different, you know, uh, alleys and make it, you know, accessible by the masses. And so uh-huh. it's part, my, my skill sets parlayed well into this. So it's, yeah, adapting that kind of thing to, to different modern technologies as they come up, which is what, in Moji, so uh, 
maybe you maybe I'll let you explain it just to just yeah. so I don't screw this up. Yeah. Like what yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. minion explanation. Yeah. Is that really brought it yeah. on for me? Yeah, that yeah. Makes so sense. basically you were clickable branded icons and what we're doing is we're taking the behavior of an emoji and we're just augmenting it one more step. So when you click on and what looks like an emoji to you, uh, when we're calling an emoji, um, it opens up a rich media experience. So for instance, if you were to get the minion, you're able to tap on it and then when you tap on it, you can watch a movie trailer, buy tickets, um, and then share that on with a friend. So you can do that. You can see a Starbucks icon. It gives you a store locator, brings up a uh, deeply embedded Uber link, and all that kind of stuff. So we're facilitating people to ingest content, utilitarian-wise, uh, be able to grab an Uber or a Lyft and meet somewhere. And so all those type of things happening all from one icon and a message. That's pretty cool. And probably yeah. could send it through across all kinds of different platforms, Correct. I imagine. And, yeah. yeah. And yep. so would that be something that would be more interactive on a website, too? Would it be like embedded into a website? So too? yeah, we're actually working on that now. And that's something that we're going to be debuting pretty soon, that we're also powering websites to be able to have have uh, an, an emoji pop up, and yeah. then you'll be able to tap that and share that across messaging apps around the world nice. from, from a website too. Yeah, that is uh, that is very forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's better than just you know the karaoke emoji on the. Well, Bill Gates yeah. called and he said he wants it all over his new city. <laughs> oh, so, you know, oh, well, then, yeah. see, there, there so, it is. Yeah. That's the ending to the movie right there. <laughs> <laughs> just ripped it out. Well, that's awesome. Well, Michael, I want to thank you so much uh, for, for joining us today, thank too. You. No, and thanks for having by. me. This has Appreciate been really cool. Uh, and I want to thank everybody who's tuning in, too. So this is Trends with Benefits. Did you want to thank me? Uh, yeah, that's that's. that's he fair. did. You couldn't hear it. It was, really, it was through the earbuds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll dub it in in post. Uh, no, <laughs> thank everybody tuning in to uh, Trends with Benefits. We do this show every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. And then it goes up as a podcast after that. And, uh, you know, share it, subscribe, do all those things. We have another show tomorrow with this guy down here on the end, uh, Ryan, uh, called Between the Streams. That's and we true. talk about entertainment and everything going on in the world of movies and television. And that is live at Friday at 2 p.m. So tune in for that tomorrow with us. And uh, stay tuned to everything else we have going here on Digital Trends Facebook page. Check out reviews at uh, the website for pretty much everything that we talked about today. Let us know in the comments what you think, what you would want in a smart city. I see Caleb is clearly maybe on his seventh margarita as he's typing on here. <laughs> it's a long message. I'll read it afterward. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs> I'm going to go see Justice League so you don't have to. Nice. <laughs> Take a look.